Now, according to what the internet has told me, this should be an exciting come home, not just a normal come home. Oh no, this should be one of those. Oh, is it? there it is. Oh, I see it. Do you see it? I see it. Look at that. Look at that. What is that hiding behind the post? A box. Oh. Caution. Sharp objects inside. That is a lie. It should only be one sharp object. But. What? 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 What is it? Well, it's very tall compared to a door. I mean, look at this. Mm. The box itself is nearly as tall as the maniac minus head. It's kind of impressive. All right, folks. We got a choice. Shall we use for this unboxing the M Tech neck knife? Ooh, little little M Tech full tang neck knife. Hmm. Or should we go old school? in terms of looks, and go for the Canon Little French Miguel. I think that's the name for him, Miguel. Nice jimping. Hmm. <laughs> Give them both a chance to shine. I think we'll use the Miguel. We're gonna do this in dramatic fashion. Happy birthday to me, mostly from me. Although a few people contributed, it's mostly from me. That's a massive bowl. Massive, she's a massive bowl. I look at that, square too. Just one or another, you can't pop just one of them. They're all connected. So, disappointment on the bubble wrap. Maybe I'll make some armor out of it. Would you like to see some armor out of my bubble wrap? Anyone guess what it is yet? Why, yes, it is a windless product. Congratulations. Now, what is this? If you compare it to my leg, hmm, it's pretty big, isn't it? Either that or I'm pretty small. I'm not sure. I don't go around people a lot, so I could be, uh, could be uninformed about my size. Now, let me get a camera. I don't remember where I left this focus hand. So let me get my neck knife, move my bubble armor out the way, get on the floor with my Viking shirt that says, what's my shirt say? Viking World Tour. A very important date. videos on YouTube that I just talked about. Yeah. Get it? Oh, yeah, some of you are saying they don't do this. Can't show that. Well, on paper, get rid of that. Don't show it. Oh, cool. Okay. I couldn't tell from the picture or a certain other YouTuber's channel that had one of these named Matt Eason, if you've ever heard of him. I know, he's a very minuscule channel, but clearly... It is actually in blue, that is good, because it looked in the picture on the website like black, and I don't remember if Matt showed his scabbard for it, even though it is a windless scabbard. Okay, so if you haven't guessed by now, this is a big sword with a blue handle. Blue is actually my favorite color, and I've never owned a blue-handled sword. I've owned some with ox blood and a few other colors. Well, it's got a lot of grease on that leather, doesn't it? Well, that's, that's nice. I like that shape of the handle. I knew it was a, well, what would we call that? It's six sides. So hexagon, hexagonal, flat and hexagonal. But that is, well, wow, that's better than average leather work on a windlass, I must admit. Look at that. Cosmoline smattering. Okay. Now, this is supposed to have had my initials engraved on it, and it in fact does. I'll have to show that better. But you can see, 
There, ESS, my initials. Now, I agree with Matt. This is not as, well, it's, I thought I did a not so great job sharpening. That's like, <laughs> that level of sharpness is almost the same as one of my sharpening jobs. And I agree with him, they cut a pretty noticeable second angle. Oh, yeah, that's, that's much worse than my secondary angles. But it's still fairly sharp, and I think I'll apple seed that a bit with a, with a wet stone at some point. But I may see it, it may cut all right on time. But that is the sword. A little heavier than I was expecting in terms of weight, but it really is. Like, the balance on, I don't know what nonsense, let's check. <laughs> yeah, right about there. Let's see, so that is not bad. Now, that's definitely too, too heavy for one hand, but for two hands, yeah, it's pretty nimble, like I said, uh, like Matt said, but it's a bit heftier than I thought, and my hands being small, I will say that the handle up here is a little thick feeling for me, but it's also slathered in cosmoline right now, so I don't know if you can see that sheen on there, you can see maybe where I write my name, you can see, yeah, it's covering grease, so it may be the grease that's making it a little harder to grip than it will, but, uh, yeah, that's about that. Now, the scar is very beefy. Look at that compared to my hand. That is a thick steel bar. I'm not arguing. That's definitely safety. I was just expecting these to be a bit thinner. Wow, that is... Also, those lanyettes are pretty far from the blade. I expect that to be further. I don't know how this is turning out because my camera's above me, but you can see the gap there. It's, it's The blade is kind of... has a slight bit of a ricasso. And the ricasso is kind of sunk into the uh, hilt. I think you probably should able to see that. It's pretty good, but uh, initial inspections are unfavorable. But Windless has done this to me. I don't know how Windless does this to me. Almost every Windless sword I've bought from them, apart from the sale, but over the past few years, if you look, the pommel is slightly off center. Not enough to feel it in hand, but I can see it there. And when I bought my Bosworth longsword, <laughs> The pommel was also slightly off center like that. And it's not in the direction you'd put it on a single hand sword. Like if you ever watch Peter Johnson's videos about how they cantered pommels to accommodate the wrist moving past them on single hand swords, it's actually in the opposite direction. I don't think that's gonna affect cutting. It might mess with my edge alignment slightly because it is slightly out of alignment. I don't know, but then again, my backhand. It's not my front hand at least. I don't know, but that's interesting to know. Overall, that's pretty good. Like I said, it's a bit, bit heavier than I was expecting. Not bad by any means, but more weight than I anticipated by a little bit. One, like in the two-hand grip, it definitely, especially if I get this grease off right now, it's very slippy. Feels like I'm going to drop it when I swing it. I got to get that off. But, um, yeah, it feels like this one will have better handling. I mean, it's got some heft. It definitely... I feel it's gonna have that momentum in the swing that it's not gonna to want to stop easy compared to some smaller weapons I have. But for its size, I think that's that's good. Now, you see this, okay, so that's where it's not wobbling. That's pretty far down. I would expect it here from the blade harmonics, but um, yeah, anyway, uh, very much taper as you can see. I have one of the replicas they made from Monty Python's Holy Grail. The Black Knight Sword, and like I said, I paid $35 for it. it originally sold for $250. I would not have paid $250 for it, but it has it supposedly, according to the website at least, the same proportions as this. The blades are the same length and the grips are the same length. Uh, yeah, they are pretty much the same size, aren't they? Get that at the level there. Yeah. Same length blades, everything you can tell. The Black Knight Sword is a wider. Blade and the English two hander and has the very spacious double rings with holes and undulations and nice spiral wrap. Good stiff work. You can see they actually lacquered this one because it's black on the threads. This interesting pommel which has a weird eye in the middle for no reason. Looks like a Star Wars droid, like IG88 or something. But this one is a threaded pommel with the typical. Windless cap, although I think they glued the handle on, on that one. Now, weight wise, uh, hmm. It's a very difficult balancing act, isn't it? So that one in the door handle, so it won't slip. Yeah, I feel roughly about the same. So on the website, I couldn't find a weight for this one. 
I have some old museum records catalogs I can look in, but in terms of measurements, they're the same. Now, let me show you a little bit of difference here. Well, as we can see, this one, if I wiggle it back and forth at the handle, we get some undulation. Yeah, Wiggle it. Well, let's try wiggling the air here. Wiggle in the air. Eh, not so bad, right? Pretty steep. For such a long blade, that is pretty, uh, pretty stiff. Let's say now, <laughs> with Monty Python, this is almost humorous. I do the same thing. And, you know, it's not going to see how much more that wiggles. Now, this is unfortunate, though, if I do the same wiggle test here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Get a better grip on it here, here, yeah. See how much that thing's fluctuating? Yeah, it is a, and look, even holding up on its own weight, you see it is drooping. See that it droops down slightly. Yeah, this is from windlasses, what I call noodle phase, when they went from super, from blades that were too thick with no distal taper to blades that were reasonably thin. Look at that, reasonably thin all the way through. It's no distal taper really, but it's roughly, I'm actually gonna say, it feels a slight bit lighter than the English two-hand sword somehow. I don't know how that worked out, but I'm glad I only paid $30 for it. But look at this dancing. That's just me wiggling like this. Like, that is ridiculous. But it is light enough that, look at this one hand, because I'm holding my phone in the other hand. I am swinging this sword one hand. See, the cosmoline is now gone, and we have a another mirror posh. You can kind of see the undulation there, meaning that if we look down the blade, we'll see that there are some lines there. So I'm going to catch them in light, you see. Some hills and valleys, some rippling. Not perfect, but typical. Stabby. 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 Yeah. Good time. So, if I take this, I can't find a good spot to do this, but you can see I can move this around fairly well, single handed. You know? Like, it's not impossible. I wouldn't want to fight with it, but it certainly is maneuverable enough that I can do that. And the hilt's pretty solid. The pommel's good. I like the double guards. It's got a good feel to it, you know? Like this, yeah. But look at this. Yeah, this is no good. This is no good. That's me moving the hilt an inch, yeah? So, it is a prop. I bought it because it was Monty Python's Black Knight. I paid 30 bucks, but it's a horrible blade. Now this one, if I move the hilt, look at that. That's not nearly as much movement. I'm moving it much further. Like that's a couple inches worth of movement. I'm getting less movement in the blade. So, yeah. Well, now that I feel more in my hand, they're pretty close to the same weight. I mean, they're very similar sorts of weight balance and everything. Let's check the points of balance. That may be something there. We did this way, so I'm not back to my wall. Okay, that is. Looks like around. Let's see one. Three, three and a half inches out, maybe. Maybe four. I don't have a ruler with me, but somewhere between three and four inches at about three and a half. And of course, this has more of a guard to it, but it's a thinner guard. So, right. and actually, that balances honestly about the same distance out, maybe a little closer. So, yeah, they feel very similar despite being very different swords, but size wise, nearly identical. So, pretty good. Now, I think I'm either five, somewhere between five, ten, and eleven. That comes essentially up to my chin. As does this one. <laughs> so if I do this on the ground, this flex. You can't see that. But yeah, this one goes like this. This one actually doesn't flex that much, but putting one finger over it now, maybe two. Yeah, like that. <laughs> this one not so much. Yeah, very different played characteristics. But I'm pretty happy with it so far. Partly, thank you, Matt Eason, for doing your review and bringing my attention to this model. Let's go with the uh, truage here towards the tip where I sharpened it a little bit. And, uh, yeah. Now, if you look, it's still a little bit rippy in the tear, but I think it's good enough for now, given the length of the blade and all. Now, we'll go with the pulsy edge here. Same, same. So I think that touch-up I did on the edge, a little bit of touch-up, 
It's made it much better. I didn't see it, if it would do paper before, but I can feel it different. So I think that's where I'll leave it for now and see how it cuts against the targets. Like I said, it's a rather long <laughs> blade. Long, long blade. Long, 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 how long is that long? Long blade. All right, Hilson. And good night, folks.